So this is the new Sigma 500 millimeter 5.6. And oh my gosh, this thing is lightweight. Let me tell you, I recently held the Sony 300 millimeter 2.8 with the Sony rep. Unfortunately, I didn't get to take that one home, but held that one and I was amazed by how light that is. And this one at 500 millimeters 5.6, is probably even lighter, which is kind of incredible to think about. But I'm finally getting my hands on this thing and I am really excited to test it out a little bit today. I'm gonna try it out just really quick with some of these Canada geese subjects out there. See how that crop in looks when I crop that later in and post. Just get a little sharpness test on that right there. Got sparrows flying all around. And you can see this train tracks right above me up here. I just realized my GoPro was loose, so tightening that up right now and hopefully that'll stay. Um, but you'll notice it's already pretty bright outside today. Um, that's, uh, that's because, unfortunately, I have, I've had some problems getting this lens shipped into me as uh, promptly as normal. Um, and so I'm only getting this with three days remaining before the embargo ends to make a first impression video on this. And to top that off, the next two days are supposed to be pretty flood filled rains. So in all reality, I've had, I have just today to get my first impressions on this. Um, not necessarily keen on going out when it's giving us flood warnings in the area. And, uh, Neither will it be for a lot of the wildlife that I have around here. So today's really my day. And uh, unfortunately on this morning, I did have um, a class that I do with my students on Saturdays. So I was running my creator cohort this morning, so I couldn't even get out at the crack of dawn. And so this is my first time getting to touch this lens, getting to use it, came in last night. Gonna get to test it out some. Got some coot out there on the pond way in the distance. Hmm, pretty interesting. So I've turned on the lens stabilization without the body on this, just to test that out. That was at 500 millimeters handheld, standing up in a slightly uncomfortable crouched position. Probably couldn't tell from the video there, but I was slightly crouched. And that was pretty dang good. I am noticing that stabilization seems to be a little bit maybe technological. I don't know if there's a better word for that, but it seems to kind of, like in that video, you could see it kind of moving, maybe like that. A little bit robotic, but between those robotic movements was like rock st steady, solid. And honestly, it's definitely one of the better lenses I've used recently at 500 millimeters, so pretty impressive. Got a hawk out there in the distance. Flew up to the perch. Turkey vulture up above. Hawks flying again. This hawk seems to be just darting back and forth between those two trees. I've seen that hawk every day between those two big trees out there in the distance, or every time I've come here uh, for a while. Been here three times in the past month, if you include today, and uh, loves that territory, but don't really have access to him on the other side of the river, so no photos. Pretty cool bird though. This hummingbird up there likes being there every single time I come out and literally is always hanging out on the top of this dead bush here. <laughs> it's quite amazing. This 
So I got a really cool shot actually the other day with that exact Anna's Hummingbird male that is just always around this area. Uh, the other day, it was just this beautiful sunset with just these clouds in the sky and got some gorgeous colors behind it. But it was really harsh um, backlighting. And what I tried to do was get a silhouette in that moment of the Anna's Hummingbird as it was on top of some of these perches with the sun just directly behind it and using a really cool color temperature, uh, really low on my white balance temperature, I was able to get just some stunning shots. And one that I actually picked out where I was able to get the Anna's Hummingbird in the middle of opening its beak to grab an insect and eat an insect, which I didn't even know that they did, but apparently they do. Um, and that just might be kind of dumb of me and my ornithology knowledge, 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 but just such a cool, incredible moment. And uh, turned out to be a pretty dang good photo, I think. So I was really happy with that. And uh, let me know what you guys think of it in the comments. Got a bunch of killdeer flying up above. Let's see if we can get this Anna's a little better. Yeah. No photo really yet. This image stabilization is a little confusing to me. Not sure whether I like it or not. <laughs> I do, but I also don't. It definitely feels quite robotic, but it is really impressively stable for 500 millimeters. So kind of a weird mix on what I'm feeling there. These are goldfinches. Photographed these guys the other day too. Nothing really too particularly cool that I got of them, but Beautiful birds. In some ways, I actually like the lesser goldfinches more than the popular American goldfinches around here. Hearing it, Anna's, that sounds lower. Oh, there it is, right there. I keep back up now. Hmm, and this way we got too much clutter. It's right up in these bushes here. No good at angles, unfortunately. But let's see if I can at least show off the sharpness of this lens. Not a good angle because down here, just get a really high key background with too many sticks cluttering the frame. This side, that's more eye level where I can get some good background then I have too many sticks cluttering it. But I can't get a better close up though. Stretching. Oh, there we go. Just moved. It'll turn. There we go. That should show off the capabilities of this lens pretty well when it comes to close-ups. See if I can snag a few more with that. Ooh, I love that. Smallest amount of pink showing back in the frame. The wind lens is so shallow that the wind is literally blowing it. It's interesting. Let's see if I can get a shot of that. Depth of field is so shallow, right? That when the wind blows, blows this guy in and out of focus. You can see it for a moment there. My focus isn't actually changing. There we go. Some good photos. Cool. I'm pretty happy with that.
probably leave this guy alone for now. There's people that keep walking in front of me and behind me up ahead, so I'm just gonna go downhill to avoid them. All right, that was a good test with this lens. Get some of the close-up capabilities of this thing. So the location I'm out at today is um, kind of a nature-y area right next, right bordering up against my city. And uh, nothing too special, but one of my more favorite places to go as of recent and um, is uh, easy to take advantage of some easy wildlife photography. Um, nothing here is super friendly. Those Anna's hummingbirds are generally just very friendly. So the shots, shots are always a little tricky to get, but it's very casual and easy to walk around here. Especially the sparrows around here. There's so many sparrows here but they always seem to not want to be photographed. <laughs> Lots of scrub jays too. You can see one flying across the river there. One over there. However, they don't typically like to be photographed here either. This place used to be a lot bigger on waterfowl that I'd find here. But for whatever reason, I've not seen many waterfowl here in the past three or four years. Um, and if anything, I'd say these rivers are actually fuller than they used to be, if that's a word. Yet still, uh, no, no waterfowl really on these rivers anymore. Or maybe it's because they're more full that they don't come here. Maybe there's more places for them elsewhere. Maybe it's too deep for them to get to the bottom of the rivers, get their food, their aquatic veg vegetation. So let's see, what am I liking about this lens so far? So far, you probably have seen, if you follow my channel, my Sigma 70 to 200 review 2.8 on the one they recently made. Um, I filmed a whole video with that one. And uh, I didn't like the aperture ring on that one because it was placed way too close to the focus ring. And it was also about the same thickness as the focus ring and closer to you. So I naturally just wound up turning that one all the time <laughs> or trying to, even if I had it locked so it wouldn't turn. But this one I like a lot more because it's further up, harder to get to. And the focus ring right here is more natural for most, I think, wildlife photographers and where they would want a focus ring. This focus ring is also really nice and smooth nice and big no mistake on if you're grabbing it or not so i like that this aperture ring is pretty sweet it's pretty fun i should say it's not so much that i would use it very much but it is fun so you can lock it in like that now it can't move lens hood pretty standard typical do you like it um Lens foot, really good. This is the type I like. This one's also deeper as opposed to the one on the Sigma 70 to 200 that I didn't like as much because it was a little bit more shallow. And so that's good news. I feel like it's also put it in a better position for wildlife photographers to where it's weighted, even with the heavy camera, more correctly. Not gonna totally let it go, but you can kind of see generally a decent uh, positioning. And pretty happy with it. Lens collar. So it's this clicking. It's nice there. Pretty cool. One thing that is interesting, I guess I always think a lens w looks weird like that, but honestly, I guess if it performs well, I can't complain. <laughs> I think it's always weird when it kind of jets out at the end like that. So aesthetically, not the biggest fan, but that matters very little in comparison to how it performs. Now, there is some American kestrels in that snag, that tree up there always. I think they're wanting to nest there. I know they've nested there in past years in a cavity somewhere up there. Always debated spending time to make a video about it, but not sure if I will. I don't know. If that sounds really interesting to you. Let me know in the comments.
but yeah, I'm not quite sure if it's gonna be the right video for me. I think part of what makes it weird is that I've got houses right back there, backyards. So I'd get up on the hill and it wouldn't be in other people's property, but it is kind of close to it, which feels a little strange sometimes. People always get weird on you. I've had the cops calling me before for doing wildlife photography <laughs> and not because I was trespassing. <laughs> I was not trespassing in that moment, but people thought I was casing their house. <laughs> so yeah, just an interesting scenario. I think that's Kestrel up there. Let's double check. Yep. That is our Kestrel friend. Here, I'll see if I can get some sky in the background behind him. Got, you might not, probably can't see it in the GoPro, but some beautiful scenery out in the distance. There's the second Kestrel. There's the other one. Oh, almost got it. Turned in a weird direction. See if I landed any of those. We're shooting all manual focus there. Guys, literally, <laughs> sometimes comments crack me up. People just are, oh, there goes that Kestrel. He gonna fly, stay flying. Oh, he's out in the distance. Do you like that sky behind him? Hmm, you get a little higher. I can get some of that mountain behind him. Oh, he flew, but... I don't think I got the shot that I wanted. I was trying to recompose at that very exact second. Eh, it's all right. Yeah, well, I don't know. I'll pull that up in editing. It's still a very pretty scene. It's a little too tiny for what I want. Even for a small in frame, a little bit too tiny as opposed to the scene kind of around him. I think it would have been a nice small in frame if the other elements of uh, those twigs and stuff weren't so cluttered in it, but because there's so many twigs in it, I don't think that it's quite as ideal as I would hope. This is kind of a great subject though. Debating sticking around more. Oh, what I was saying earlier about the comments though. Sometimes people online crack me up because <laughs> people think they know everything about you and your life and they know about what you do and all that stuff. And so I get comments from people sometimes that are like, you're lying, no one can shoot manual focus in flight. That Kestrel's pretty close now. Beautiful, beautiful bird. Let's get some video of that. So it's from a down angle. It's not big on the angle. Trying to wait for him to fly like that. Swing back towards me, looking at the camera. 
Nope, he's high up on that huge one out there now. But the one behind me is now flying. That's what I've debated. I've debated if I can get eye level with that one from the side of that hill there. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. I don't know if you saw that on camera. Cottontail just flushed out of right there. Oh, there's a, there's a hole down in there. Pretty cool. Did not see him there. Sorry, buddy. Um, let's see, Kestrel. It's flown off to another spot, but I am curious still about that angle. So I'm gonna check out that angle really quick. Anyways, what I was saying about the comments is that, yeah, people try to tell me all the time, there's no way you shoot manual focus. That button there shows you MF. Been on that most of this time. I was testing out the AF a little bit at the beginning to make sure that it's quick on this lens. But most of the time, been on MF. This whole time with the Kestrel's been on MF. And so people try to use that as evidence to sh say that I'm a liar and my gear reviews or whatever else they deem is invalid. And it's just funny, you know? It's funny that people think they know you and they know your life when they don't know the first thing about you. <laughs> and they haven't even followed you enough to see what you kind of do. <laughs> see what you're about. It'd be different too if this guy's some person who comments on all my videos and then, you know, one video he's like, oh, I don't think you accurately represented yourself in this. But it's literally always some rando. This first comment on my channel being, you're a liar. I don't know, why am I talking about this? It's pointless to waste my energy on this, guys. But Sigma, <laughs> pretty cool. Liking this so far, it seems really sharp when I look at it through my viewfinder. It's a very high resolution viewfinder, but it's always different than when you pull it up on the computer, so. To be fair, I really have to wait to see it on the computer. See if it's as sharp as it seems. By the way, that angle back there, I could tell as I was getting halfway up, I'm not gonna get eye level with it. So that's why I gave up there. <laughs> um, on another note, today, I just launched the day that I'm actually out filming this. Let's see. You can already see it here, it's pulled up. Uh, my internet's not working well. Well, yeah, internet doesn't work well right here. But I launched Wilder. You guys haven't seen it yet, it's my new brand. I am saying goodbye to Bird Burger for forever. And finally, after six months of working on it, came up with the new brand. Um, and just implemented it today as I'm making this video. So three or four days ago as of now, brand's called Wilder. Um, really the vision for it is to carry up a lot of the parts of Bird Burger that just didn't make sense with the brand. So Bird Burger at the beginning started off as a brand that was supposed to be lighthearted, funny, just kind of fun and enga engaging with kind of the newer, more uh, loose, type of nature lover and audience. But very quickly it morphed into being a very uh, much more professional, a uh, little bit more high end of a brand than I expected, which did not match the Bird Burger uh, branding and vision at all. So, decided that I should rebrand and rebranded to Wilder. Most important parts of Wilder is that it's gonna keep my podcast so I'm gonna stay involved with other creators, uh, give you guys more insights into them, their lives, their careers, their photography. Number two, um, I launched a brand new newsletter. That's actually what I really want you guys to sign up for. <laughs> if you guys um, are interested, ooh, that could be pretty. Uh, it's a little too tight. Darn it. I need to back up more if this was to be good, but 
I'm not gonna get a clear shot. That's a pretty tree that it's on, but unfortunately, it's too tight. Um, focal length. That's why it's good to have zoom lenses sometimes, guys, and wider angles. <laughs> but these have their value too, obviously, as shown today with the Anna's Hummingbird. So anyways, Wilder got a new newsletter that's out called the Wilder Leaflet. And the Wilder Leaflet um, is going to be really simple. I really try to section it off nicely for you guys. That way it doesn't waste any of your guys' time. You can skip a section really easily, concisely if you want, or read all sections if you like to. And it's going to be broken up into three sections each time with the bonus section. Three sections consist of the big, kind of biggest news of the week or of the month in the first section. Second section is a creator spotlight, where you get to learn more about a creator, dive into them a little bit more, and what, uh, what they do. And then third section is always gonna be an exclusive deal only for my newsletter subscribers. So I'm gonna be offering up a deal in each newsletter that is only for my newsletter subscribers, like a gear discount. Um, and every time it will be a discount, and I'm really excited about that part. It's kind of the most exclusive access you can get with me and what I do. Ooh. It's a lot going on right here. House finches. We also got See if I can show one. Can you hear it? It's woodpecking. Beautiful woodpecker. Surprisingly, he's very okay with me being here. He's just hopping around looking for stuff to peck at. Yeah, he's chill. All the finches and sparrows flushed. There's also a quail that I heard, did not see. Quail disappeared. But this woodpecker's being cool with me. Did you shoot autofocus through all that stuff? I think not. Look at this clutter right here. There's no way you're autofocusing through that. I don't care what you have. Okay, if you have the latest Sony 25,000, it's not gonna work. <laughs> That's why it's important. You know, when people say it's not. Anyways, those shots didn't turn out great, but I have gotten good shots doing things like that before, shooting through clutter, like with flower fields or um, bushes that are really nice and evenly patterned. So, uh, but Wilder. So that's my news uh, newsletter and favorite part about the newsletter is um, at the bottom of every newsletter, I have a little bonus section called the zoom out and in the zoom out you can find a bunch of random little tangents you can go off and they're just listed there no explanations hardly just listed that way you can dive more into things um, that i'm diving into and find interesting throughout the week 
but it's very easy to skim through. No pressure at all if you don't want to read it. And very straight to the point. It's really the goal of my newsletter was be, to be pretty straight to the point and uh, really just give you guys value in the least amount of words possible. Got a little spotted toey. Fun bird. Got tons of sparrows and finches flying around and some gold finches too. So newsletter, and the last part of Wilder is Wilder is taking on the competition. So Bird Burger, because we're closing out Bird Burger, I'm transitioning into Wilder. It's now going to be um, hosted by Wilder rather than Bird Burger. So uh, yeah, I am excited for this year's competition. It's gonna look a little bit different, a little bit new with Wilder, um, but man, it's going to be good. I'm telling you guys, I have some big plans for this year. <laughs> and you guys already know we have a new category. Um, so there's lots to look forward to this year in Wilder. And uh, really hope that you guys uh, participate in this year's competition. What a cool lens. Man, are they pretty though. Got an American goldfinch right there. Also, also if you subscribe, sign up to my Wilder newsletter, the Wilder Leaflet, you'll actually get a free downloadable in the field PDF cheat sheet. Um, that's really cool. And uh, helps you while you're out in the field if you're a beginner or if you're more advanced looking to compose shots even better. Let me give you a quick little example. So if you're a beginner, have this in the field cheat sheet where it's very simple, shows you a couple steps to get some basic good wildlife photography shots. Then if you want to upgrade your compositions, have this more advanced version where it gives you different options for how to compose your images with wildlife and is um, a little bit more in detail. Both show examples of how you do it, what they look like, and uh, are pretty useful in my opinion. Both single pages, you can read them easily on a phone or blow them up to look at them in much more detail on your computer. So if you want to download that for free, make sure you subscribe um, to my newsletter below and you'll get a free link to it. Bummed I couldn't show you guys any waterfowl today. Oh, we do got some out there. Let's see if we can get any on the distance. Oh, never mind then. Man, they were pretty far off. Kind of surprised that they flushed there. Thought they were so far off that they wouldn't care, but wanting to see what this looked like do this 500 but apparently no dice there they come flying back around some golden eye common golden eye don't you love it when birds named a common something are not necessarily common in your area <laughs> At least that's the case for me. <laughs> Common golden eye are more of, I wouldn't say, they're definitely not rare, but they're a treat to see around here.
Got the kestrel up there in the tree. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to learn about this Sigma 500 millimeter F4. Sorry, F5.6. <laughs> Wish it was an F4. Um, if so, I'm working on, I will be working on my review starting very soon, um, formulating my more complete thoughts. And so if you wanna check that out um, and have some, some input into what I might Impresses me how they can keep their balance on such a tiny twig. Even better perch. There he goes, up top. All right, pretty cool. It's a pretty good spot for watching a Kestrel's hunt. So maybe I gotta be back in the spring. I don't know. This day is convincing me. So anyways, if there's anything you wanna learn for the gear in the gear review about this lens, let me know. And I'll definitely be including a lot of sharpness test files in my Wilder newsletter leaflet, uh, once again, about this lens, just like I did for the 70 to 200 2.8. And so uh, that's gonna be a place where I give a lot of my really uh, insider stuff um, away to you guys. So if you wanna see the sharpness test files for this, make sure you subscribe to that leaflet and it'll be in the zoom out eventually. So. Just another reason to go subscribe over there. Also, let me know your guys' thoughts on Wilder. How you like the brand, the new name, new logo, all of it. So, love to hear your thoughts. There's Diana's hummingbird again on the way back. <laughs> what did I tell you? It's always between one of those, one of these like three trees. Yep, you just flew to one of the other three trees. <laughs> amazing, amazing how habitual animals are. Yeah, it's been a good day. Thanks you guys for joining me around. If you wanna check out this Sigma 500 millimeter 5.6 review when I put it out, make sure you subscribe below, hit notifications, that way you know when it's coming. I'll also make a whole wildlife photography adventure that I'm already planning out with this lens. Uh, so I'm gonna be taking it up to a really cool location uh, that some of you guys will recognize if you've been following me for a while um, and one of my favorite spots. So gonna take it out there get a lot more use in with it, formulate some more opinions and thoughts, get a review out, review out on it, and uh, much more. So be honored to see you guys in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to that, uh, our new newsletter at Wilder below if that's something you're interested in. And I'll see you guys next time.